We're in a time of unprecedented environmental uh, change globally. There are millions of people moving to coastal cities. So the question is, how do we sustain these cities in the long term, given sea level rise and climate change impacts? The problems that we're faced with today, especially with climate change, can't be solved with one discipline. There needs to be multidisciplinary science, and they also require collaboration across agencies from the government, NGOs, communities, academia. The Bywater Institute is fundamentally focused on bringing people together to come up with pragmatic solutions to the environmental challenges of our time. The tagline for the Research Institute is Thriving by Water. And under the umbrella of Thriving by Water, we have three research programs. One is Designing Our Future by Water. The second is Sharing Our Future by Water. And the third is Growing Our Future by Water. So designing our future by water is taking sort of science and engineering and mixing them together to understand how we design natural and, and built infrastructure in order to improve our climate adaptation. We can't build our infrastructure the way that we did 100 years ago, so we have to find ways to make them uh, adaptive uh, and sustainable and responsive to societal needs in the long term. One is focused on urban water management here in New Orleans and sorting out uh, the ecological impacts of converting stormwater systems to green stormwater systems. So that means stormwater lot rain gardens that are becoming more and more uh, applied in cities. So maybe there's standing water on them. Well, what impact does that have on the ecology? Are we converting a sort of urban system into a more natural system? Um, does that cause issues with mosquitoes, for example, or rodents or invasive vegetation? So how do we transition our water management paradigm while enhancing biodiversity and protecting public health. Sharing Our Future by Water is focused on water equity and it involves uh, access to clean water and sanitation, but also, especially here in the city of New Orleans, access to safe spaces from hurricane storms and floods. One of the most critical changes that's occurred over the years is the reduction in sentiment uh, coming down the Mississippi, which has led um, to literally um, the erasure of much of the coastline with significant impacts on our society and the people living in, the, in this region. And what we are coming up with are solutions to continue to provide sentiment, to, uh, in a sense, rebuild those coastlines while protecting the commerce of Louisiana. We have these large scale, say, river diversion projects, uh, other kinds of coastal restoration projects that are being uh, built right now. And there's questions around how do those programs um, sort of integrate into the communities uh, where they're being built? What does that mean for the future of those communities? And how can those communities be better integrated into the decision-making process to guide the implementation of those projects? The third is growing our future by water. And this is where we bring communities into the research uh, portfolio. So I like to think of this as um, a place where we can study problems like climate change and health, the change in climate really is going to impact human health. We know from a lot of data the intersection of housing and health, both physical health and mental health of individuals. Especially in South Louisiana, we get wind and flooding events and home damage, and that results in potential exposure to contaminants that are well known and documented to impact human health. There's a disconnect, I think, uh, between um, what we do in academia and what's needed in communities. We're setting up a community advisory board, a standing one, that we'll go to with every proposal that we put in to source feedback and, and set up an ad hoc committee that really guides the need through the research. I really do think that the communication piece back and forth is the key at all of the different stages of research, planning the research agenda, implementing the research study, and then disseminating the results. It's super important is this translation. We need people to understand that it's possible to impact climate and that we want to promote interventions that are evidence-based. So I think the Community Advisory Board is an intermediary between scientists and the broader community to translate that information. Tulane has a long and deep history of engagement uh, with its community, starting with our founding when we were confronting a pandemic 
uh, yellow fever, uh, and the aftermath of Katrina. We've always been deeply involved in using our academic resources to solve the world's problems. It requires analysis uh, from engineering, from public health, um, from medicine, from every single discipline to come up with the best solutions. Most of the school's focus on civil uh, engineering and climate change resilience uh, occurs in the Department of River Coastal Science and Engineering, which is a relatively new department at Tulane. And the civil engineering that our department is focusing on is, is around water resources and how to live and, and work and engineer with water. New Orleans may be a canary in a coal mine, but these problems matter to the entire world. And so I think our students and our faculty and our staff have a unique viewpoint living in New Orleans. And I think it sets us up for solutions that will impact the entire world going forward. We like to think that our research is telescoping. So what we want to do is, is work alongside those implementing agencies that are doing those big experiments such that we can build projects in the future better. We have to learn how these projects perform well and how they don't perform well and tweak those future uh, interventions to be sure that we're resilient and sustainable in the future.